Hello there, my name is Ben Chapman and welcome to Go Home Show for SummerSlam on the Monday Night Raw brand. And we kept things off with Drew McIntyre coming out to face 10,742 people at the SNHU Arena. He comes out because after his shock appearance last week at the end of the show hitting Randy Orton with a Claymore kick, he opens this week's show and says tonight he wants to face Orton face to face. He wants to have a, he wants to speak, be able to speak to him and be open and they want to be able to be no threat of attack. He gets a second, I get a second. And it's pretty much a way to set up our main event segment for tonight, which is going to be a sit down sort of conference between the two people. He has an 89 rating, Drew was a great star in this match, he worked the crowd well, and both Drew, Orton and Flair had a groundswell of public support, he has an 89 rating. And we go into the opening match of the night, which is the number one contendership for the United States Championship. And in a superb match, Ricochet defeats Seth Rollins in 1351 with a diving double knee drop after Dominic Mysterio runs into attack. Rollins gets an 82 rating, Rollins gets a 91, Ricochet a 78. It deserved better commentary with, um, with uh, Samoa Joe and Byron Saxton being the commentary team, the colour commentary team, and Tom Phillips announcing. He gets an 82 rating. And Bet Rollins has a ground sort of public support, which is pretty good. And after that segment, the Hurt Business tries to jump Ricochet, but Alistair Black and Umberto Carrillo make the save. Getting an 88 segment, of course. But Bobby Lashley is currently 24-7 champion, so just going into this match. And now he's going into a tag match right now. Impromptu. Gets an 81 rating. Black and Korea have had excellent chemistry together. Oh, that's... That was unexpected. This might be a bit of a longer-running tag team than I thought. This was going to be a one-off thing, I thought. But maybe not. But Shelton Benjamin and Bobby Lashley defeat Alistair Black and Umberto Carrillo in 1502. When Bobby Lashley pins Umberto Carrillo with the knockout punch. And if you look at those ratings... Alistair Black was the best in the match of the 92, Carrillo in 85, Lashley in 88, 78 for Benjamin. Black and Lashley had ground sort of public support, but of course does a better announcing because our commentary team needs improving on. And after the match, little short comedy segment, as R-Truth attempts to roll up Bobby Lashley, but he gets laid out and Bobby Lashley is still your 24-7 champion. Gets an 80 rating. We cut backstage to where Bianca Belair is stood by the entrance to the ring. And she's talking about how she is going this Sunday to face back Sasha Banks for the Raw Women's Championship. She has earned this opportunity. And she's now going to go out there and show Sasha what she's going to do to her. Which will be so much easier against Sasha because she's so much smaller. She will overpower her. She will, she will be more athletic. She is the strongest, the fastest, the best in WWE. She goes out for that match and they have pretty good chemistry. Gives us a 72 rated match. Jason Jordan. Could have done better as road agent. I think I might need to sack him after, before SummerSlam because I don't want him on the pay-per-view. Only goes six minutes before Bianca Belair picks Nia Jax up and hits the kiss of death on her for the win. Just showing her power and what she can do. They're pretty good chemistry, which is always good. And this Sunday, Bianca Belair will be going to face Banks. Quick hype video because next week Brock Lesnar will be on Monday Night Raw. Pretty simple as anyone gets a 100 just for the hype. 
We're going back to that edge to where Rey Mysterio is re has returned for the first time since Extreme Rules. He's able to see again. And he's with Dominic when he gets attacked by Seth's disciples. They kind of stand their ground and it's sort of an you know, or sort of an autonomous split. And and during this segment, Ray challenges either Theory or Murphy to a match with him tonight. Gets a 91, great segment. Theory and Mysterio are underwhelming, but to be fair, they're the least experienced out of the ones on here. We then move on to our next segment, which is a tag team match between the Viking Raiders and the debuting Grizzled Young Veterans. And the GYV win the match because, you know, it's their debut and I want to try and I want this Raw tag team scene to be as strong as it possibly can. Now, potentially, with an addition of Alistair Black and Berto Carrillo, which was not planned, but might have to be some sort, which could do with an actual character shift for some one of them. But James Drake pins Eric with a head and shoulders DDT, gets a 70 rating. Ivar and Eric were the two much stronger wrestlers in this match, but we're trying to push a new team because we want a very strong and a very competitive tag team scene. We go backstage and Banks and Bailey are in a sit down room with Renee Young and they're talking about their titles and they're going to be issuing an open challenge at SummerSlam because they've been told they have to defend all of their titles at SummerSlam. They know who Banks knows who she's facing for the Raw Women's title. Bailey knows who she's facing for the SmackDown Women's title. But we don't know who we're going to be facing for the tag titles. Therefore, they don't care. They are good enough that no matter who it is, they're going to be able to win. Therefore, at SummerSlam, they will be issuing an open challenge for their tag team titles because they're going to have to wrestle three times might as well make one of them a bit interesting both well Sasha Banks came out of this looking excellent and her, both her and Renee Young were great working without a script gets, gets a 76 overall for the segment though Street Profits and Cedric Alexander are backstage it's like having a muck around because they're going out for a six man tag next which gets a 71 rating and as Cedric Alexander and the Street Profits defeat Andrade and Helgaza and Dolph Ziggler when Cedric Alexander pins Dolph Ziggler with the kick to kill K2K I don't know what that is to be honest but I imagine it's pretty good because Cedric Alexander is pretty good and so yeah, so out of the six, all three of the losing team had better rating, but it kind of gives it kind of gives it a whole even split for the again the tag team division. We get a women's match as Liv Morgan defeats Peyton Royce in 7:41 with the Flatliner, the Springboard Flatliner, which she does sometimes. It's a quite pretty quick match. It gets a 78 rating. But this match was mainly to set up the aftermath, which is Shayna Baszler choking out Liv Morgan. It's pretty simple. Shayna Baszler just comes out as Liv Morgan celebrating, and she just hits it, locks in the Kurafuna clutch, and holds it in there until Morgan passes out. It was a sneak attack, so. Basil looks good, looks smart, but Morgan doesn't look bad because he didn't know the attack was coming. And it's a pretty simple affair, to be honest. We then get Ric Flair and Randy Orton backstage announcing that they are accepting Drew's opening for a chat for a two on two conference in the ring. But be warned. 
when you step in the ring with the dirtiest player in the game and the Viper, you never leave it the same again. Pretty good promo gets 100 A star segment, which is always fun to get. Next segment is a match as Austin Theory in five minutes defeats Rey Mysterio with the unproven cutter, the Theory cutter. Gets a 50, he gets a 74 rating. Mysterio gets an 85. Theory sits, no, Mysterio an 85, my bad. Theory and a 75, pretty good stuff. And to be honest, yeah, that is a strong match for Theory. Who after that match, Murphy comes out to join him, and we get a triple threat tag team match set up for SummerSlam. Probably on the pre-show, but let's not mention that. Theory and Murphy said that hey, they want into this tag title picture. Which brings out the Street Profits, and they're like, no, 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 we've just lost the titles, we deserve a rematch. And our team just beat their team earlier tonight. You ain't jumping the queue. But then Andrade and Hagada and Delina Vega come out, and they're like, but hold on. You lo when it was two on two, you lost to us. And neither of you pinned either of my guys. So they are entitled to just as much of an opportunity as you. And they keep sort of going back and forth until it's agreed that this Sunday will be a triple threat elimination tag match. The final segment for our main event is Triple H on the Titantron. And he vows that next week he will be debuting a brand new act to Monday Night Raw. But probably an NXT act. I do know who it is, I'm, but I'm kayfabing it. It'll probably be an NXT act, because of course that's who he works with. But, there'll be a brand new act on Monday Night Raw. And they will show that this is the future. Today. Gets an 80 rating. And it's a pretty good start. And then the main event segment sees Drew McIntyre come out with Christian to take on Ric Flair and Randy Orton in a conference. And it is all about the different stuff which has been brought up throughout the feud. Christian talks about how Randy Orton tried to entice him into a match and then rather than play fair with him, he got 70-year-old Ric Flair to low blow him. Ric Flair saying that he signed up to an unsanctioned match. He should have seen that coming. It was his own fault for being stupid. Drew McIntyre claim goes on about how Randy Orton has always skirted the rules. And Randy Orton claims he's been allowed to because he's actually worth something to this company. And this Sunday at SummerSlam, Drew McIntyre's head will be kicked off its shoulders. With a one single punt kick, Drew McIntyre, his entire WWE title reign will be over. And no and one year from now, it will just be a footnote in history that nobody would even remember. Pretty good stuff. There's no actual physical contact between the two, or any of them, because I think that's kind of giving away stuff from the from Sunday's pay per view, especially considering you know we have had them being hit by a punt and a claymore in in consecutive weeks. We get an 88 rating for this show. A great, great show. Well, 10,000 people. This has got to boost our ratings. But I have been Ben Chapman. If you liked this, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. If you're new around here, subscribe. If you made it all of the way to the end of this video, please let me know what you thought in the comment section down below. As I said, I've been Ben Chapman. That was Monday Night Raw. Go home for SummerSlam. 
Bye.